Dave Revson and Jim Jackson. Pleased to be joined by Jimmy King, one of the former stars at the University of Michigan, of course, part of the Fab Five the last time Michigan was in the Final Four. So I think the natural question to start this off, what's it been like to finally after 20 years, see Michigan back. It's been great. It's been great, Dave. And, you know, as you know, it's a one-in-a-lifetime thing. Um, I tell the guys uh, that's on the team right now, enjoy it. You never know when you're going to get this chance again to come back. So I just, you know, it's, it's good for me to see it on this side as a fan because um, now I, I can – it resonates with me when people come up to me and say, thanks for the memories. Right. Um, I, I don't remember where I was. I don't say, I don't say that. <laughs> well, you know, right. well, you know we battled to get there, you know, but but uh, but but now I understand what they mean by that, and uh, it's great for me to see because uh, I I have a, a true enjoyment to watch these kids and their success now. Jimmy, you live in the Detroit area. You follow the team a lot. Any similarities that you see from this particular team and the team that you played on? They're young. They uh, they're they're students of the game. Uh, they, they have a lot of respect for uh, uh, the members that came before them, just like we did. That's, that's what I see. I see the, the things um, that's more, not, not so much basketball-wise, mm -hmm. but uh, you know, how they are as, as people and uh, as players. Um, so they, they, they respect us. They want us to come back because mm -hmm. they know that they can learn. Um, they ask great questions every time I come around. And uh, it makes me reflect on the things and, and, and take my mindset back to the preparation. And that's the reason why I think they're making a deep run is their preparation. I think it's interesting because as you try to go back, and, and look, we saw this with Kentucky last year. I mean, this is what's happening now in college basketball. So to a certain extent, it's not that unusual. But you guys were really the first, I mean, to have a team that was almost exclusively freshmen mm -hmm. make it to the championship game that first year and then, of course, make it the second year as sophomores as well. How difficult is that? that all of a sudden, I mean, you go from playing in high school a year before to being on the biggest stage? It's very difficult, and you got to grow up fast. I grew up with this guy right here. <laughs> he, gave me, he gave me some education on the court. We <laughs> was just talking about that. You know, physically, you have to be ready. Uh, and mentally, you have to be just as tough, too. The Big Ten is a, was a very uh, uh, physical conference. So uh, the transition from high school to college, you have to, you have to play at a different speed. Um, um, you got to limit your mistakes, and, and it's really the big leagues. And um, so the, the quicker you learn, the better you are. Jimmy, distractions. At that time, because of the, the amount of hype, notoriety you guys got, kind of similar to what's going on with this team, with Trey Burke winning, basically sweeping all the National Player of the Year awards, Mitch McGarry now, uh, since the beginning of the tournament, getting a lot of, press, uh, getting a lot of notoriety. What, what would be your advice to how to handle that and still be able to focus on the game and get the job done? Business as usual. Leave all the outside. Uh, don't read the papers. You know, leave the tweets alone, uh, Facebook. Leave that all alone, all alone. You can pick that up after your job is done. You have to band together um, and, and, really, and really understand this is a job. And uh, you, you have to enjoy it, but you can't listen to the outside world because just like the cliche, and it's true, you're not as good as people say you are, but you're not as bad either. So you got to leave all that alone. Mm -hmm. Band together with your brothers and stay on your mission. As you look at the matchup, uh, I know you've obviously watched this Michigan team a lot. How do you think they match up with Louisville? I think they match up better with Louisville than they, do, than they did Syracuse, actually. Uh, Syracuse worried me because of their length and their, their guards. Uh, we, we have smaller guards, particularly with Trey. And I think that's the reason why he had uh, a, a subpar Trey game. He still played good and solid, hit his free throws at the end. But I think the reason why he shot one for eight is because of the length of Syracuse. So I think we actually match up better guard-wise with mm -hmm. Louisville. Uh, they're similar size guards with Russ, uh, Russ Smith. Um, I look for, the, for it to be a battle. I look for, for Russ and, 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 and Trey to almost kind of cancel out, but I think they're going to have uh, big games. And so I look for subordinate players or uh, guys to step up. Yeah, couldn't it be a situation where in this particular game is maybe not the superstars, it's the complementary players Absolutely. like the Spike Albrecht, the, Absolutely. you know, Levert's players like that that Absolutely. may have an immediate impact that could help win this game? Yes, and Levert had a great game, uh, probably one of his best games all year uh, Saturday. So I look for, for guys like that to come off the bench and, and, and Spike to – come off and hit he had a he, he grabbed a, a big rebound yeah. the other night uh -huh. you know 
this guy. So, so you never know where, where they're going to have an impact on the game. There are a lot of parallels as we talked about this team and your team and the youth being one of them. I think another one that's going to come up here in the next days and weeks is going to be decisions that guys are going to have to make about whether or not to leave. What kind of advice would you give? Hmm. If <laughs> you get an opportunity, you have to go. And I say that because I think now you're drafting on potential. And right now, if, if Trey has to go, he's player of the year, uh, best guard, point guard uh, in the draft, in my opinion, he has to go. Tim Hardaway making the decision, uh, Glenn Robinson, he, you know, I'm here, hearing even rumblings about McGarry. You know, who knows? But, but I would think that, you, you know, you sit down with your family, Hopefully you got someone in your camp that's giving you the correct advice and you then you make a you know a, a good decision, you know, informed decision. So hopefully they're getting that done. But if they have the opportunity, they gotta go. And of course you made it to two championship games. When you come back to the final four, when you think back to those moments, what stands out to you? Really just the, the competition. Like when I look back at it, I was like, well, we played some great teams. Like yeah. this this guy right here and this yeah. Ohio State team, they were number one seed. They were they were, that was a team, they whipped us, you know, but we they, we I, I always credit you guys for our success because without those on court uh whippings that they were giving us, I don't think we would have, you know, beat you guys the third game. And uh we took those lessons and learned and it, it was um you know, just a great time. We had a lot of uh, great coaches, um, uh, great teams, and that's what I remember the most. So you're responsible for the Fab Five success. Yeah, I'll I take am. Some I, consolation I, I, I take some <laughs> consolation because every time, you know, every time it comes on, uh, you know, classy sports, I just got to turn away. I, I can't watch it. But I'm gonna say this though: I think the misconception about the Fab Five, about thugs or this or that, and I tell people all the time. I've been fortunate to play when you came down to Dallas. Mm -hmm. I played with Juwan. I played with Chris. I know Ray. Mm -hmm. We'll give the shirts off their back to, to ensure that not only their teammates, but people around them um, are taken care of. I mean, and that's the kind of gentleman that you guys are. And I think people really, 20 years later, 21 years later, don't really get that not any of you guys really got in trouble. I know some things that happened mm -hmm. with, you know, the university. But for me, you know, speaking to a lot of people that don't know, don't know you personally, it's, you guys are so far away from what the public perception was at the time. And that's, I think that was part of the problem with what we were trying to express about the difference in Michigan and Duke and the reason why we were being so outspoken of, about that. Duke was considered all American kids. We were considered thugs. We didn't do anything. But had we stepped on players or spit on certain players, it would have been an issue. We never did that. There were some players that did that for Duke, but still they're held in this light. And that was the issue that we had. Um, and, and that's why we were so, uh, you know, uh, outspoken mm -hmm. about, you know, well, what's going on here? You know, what's the reason behind us being vilified? We didn't understand it. Uh, Jimmy King, fun to visit with you. Enjoy the Thank night. You. Thank I you. I appreciate it. It's got to be exciting it. for all Michigan grads, Thank especially so someone like you who helped build up the program. Thanks for your time and look forward to maybe seeing you after the game. Thank you. With Thank a big smile on Absolutely. your face. Absolutely. Go Blue, baby. Michigan by three.